hey, are these things back in currency yet? I tried to buy some fuck with them and couldn't buy that. I just I need some diesel. Hey everybody and welcome back to Koi Pond Lifestyle. So what have we got on this week? Right, today. Um, this. How annoying. Blooming blanket weed. This time of year. Look at that. It's, it, I think I might have just caught it early because... Fish getting in the way, sorry. Excuse me, coming through. Coming. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, how annoying is that? Blanket weed coming this time of year. Must have been that quick burst of sun we've been having because it's been not a bad uh, day. I've checked my nitrates. I mean, nitrates are quite low. Well, it's kind of lowish. The nitrates are obviously there because they, it's allowing my blanket weed to grow. So, uh, I did this at the beginning of the season but didn't film it. I was just something I worked on. But I thought I would let everybody know what, how I'm doing this this time. So, I did this at the beginning of the season. But I didn't film it because it was just a little idea I had that worked. So, I'm going to show you what I did at the beginning of the season with this clover leaf. Now this is the best stuff I've found personally for my pond of dealing with blanket weed, this stuff. I did a video on it, a testy video up here somewhere that I'll look if you want to see that one by all means. But uh, what I did at the beginning of the season was if you catch it really early you know I have to put half of this tub in to there to have an effect and it takes at least a couple of weeks to have that effect. Now if you can catch it early enough with the little threads, I mean some of them are getting, it's literally happened overnight, this, it's really, really quick it's come on. So I'm going to just put eight scoops of this in and just literally to give it a quick, low, short dose and see what happens. Because at the beginning of the season I did it and it worked really well, so I'm going to do that again because it messes your filters up, you get loads of the chalky stuff all in your filters, make a right blooming mess. So I'm going to just do eight scoops of this into the pond today, give it a week or so, I've got, I've got time to make this before this video comes out and then we'll look at the conclusion to see if we can catch this early by putting a smaller dose in and not messing up your filters. So let's give that a go. So pond water in watering can. Now I'm saying eight scoops and I, and I, and I bet you're going to be asking the question but how much of, is eight scoops? I've just got one of these little scoops and there's no measuring on it but I, I can't really tell you how much I'm putting in. I'm just putting in a smaller dose to my pond. So let me try to work it out. So the eight scoops that I've put in is, is a complete guess to be honest. I've just sort of put an amount in that I tried at the beginning of the season and it seemed to work okay so I'm going to try to do the same again but what I'm trying to demonstrate here is is that if you can catch it early enough you don't have to put the put the full amount that the that the label says. You can kind of go a smaller amount. If you leave it too long and then you need the full dose, then you need the full dose. And I know that with this product is when I first used it, very little patience and I was expecting it to work overnight. It doesn't. You've got to be patient with it. it. It could take up to two weeks. I know the first time I tried this when the weather was really good, it took up to two weeks. Beginning of this season I put it in, it took just over a week. So it's you've got to be kind of patient with this clover leaf stuff because it, it takes time to work but it clears in your pond okay so you just put, put it in and forget about it and it works in the background so let's get this mixed up and get it in the pond now what I also do with this is I get everything mixed up and I turn the pump off and isolate the pond from the filter system I'm going to do that leave that for about three hours because I'm not interested if it goes through the filters because I want this to work in the pond so I flick everything off and let the pond just be static for at least three hours and then just wait for it to, to do what it's got to do in the pond and then I'll put the, the, the pond back on and let it start rushing it through the filters. But I'll leave this for at least three hours and this is what I did at the beginning, so let's get it in.
okay it's in so pond's gonna disappear now for a couple of days well not the pond but the fish <laughs> pond doesn't disappear it'll stay there just a fish will disappear so you know this is it's, it's quite interesting how it worked last time and I, and I want to check this theory and, and do it again by putting a smaller amount than prescribed by the product to put in to deal with this stuff so yeah um i'm gonna give it a week because i've got time before this video goes out and we'll see how it gets on so let's move to another day and it's also been just over a week since i added my fuck to the pond so i'm gonna start adding this weekly again now i don't know whether any of you've been watching andy from derby koi he's been doing some tests on this which is similar to what i did and um he he's kind of concluding which i think is right now what i've always found and again if you go back to my testing video which will be up there somewhere there is that when i when i first started using this it does leave a bit of a grainy substance but it made it into my filter system into my vortex so when i was clearing the vortex out there was a grainy substance where i which i believe is what was left from this but it does do a really good uh, good job on clearing or giving you the clarity in your pond, adding minerals to your pond and getting your fish to eat more. Really boosts that. And I think Andy's concluded that as well. So have a look at Andy at Derby Koi and go through his test because he's testing this versus Mediclay, which is what he uses more. I use this, this is my choice of, of pond clay, water conditioner, whatever you want to call it. His is Mediclay. So he's doing the test between those where I've not had Medicare, Mediclay. I did a test between this and Koi Master's Advantage which will be up there somewhere. So if you want to see about this versus Coinmaster's Advantage, because that was an interesting result from those. I'd had some interesting results that I still use. <laughs> but yeah, so this, I've got another dose of this going in today because I want to get that clarity back up and I'm going to get a fish eating again, which is really, really good stuff. At last, my fish are eating more food. ka -ching! So yeah, they've all got their pros and cons, this stuff. Either this, Mediclay, Coinmaster's Advantage, JPD, whatever they call it. They've all got the little advantages. And it's really finding out what, what works for you in your pond. This works for me, this is what I use. Plus I like taking a mickey out of the name. Fuck. <laughs> so there it is, it's in. So I'm just taking the advantage now while everything's looking hunky-dory in my pond to get the fuck in. Get the fuck in. Yeah. Um, into my pond. What's that dog doing? Look at that. What are you doing, Bear? What are you doing over there? Um, so yeah, so that's the idea. Get some, get, get back up to speed with the fuck. Uh, into my pond, get my clarity of water looking better. Um, oh, I had to take off my aquarium the other day to clean it because those, it can't, that thing doesn't get in the nooks and crannies. And people have said, you need the stronger ones, the bigger, stronger ones to do it better, so. Yep, okay, fair enough. I'll get one of them then, at some point. But at the moment, I'm just keeping an eye on this dog. So I wonder if he's trying to, trying to jump into me... Uh, into me filter system or something. Bear, what are you doing? Good lad. So he isn't. So, uh, I'll get this, going to get this filter system cleaned out. And then we'll have a quick look at what came out of the filters. I'm right, just clearing out my um, skimmer. And also finding in my skimmer. That's a blanket weed, which again is excellent. So it's pulling it off and showing that it is working now. So it's starting to release it from the sides and into my filters. It's all good. Right, so there is, as you can see, we're getting loads of the, the blanket weed caught in here, which is good, so it tells me it's dying off and it's making its way into my filter system, which is mint news. See, all the blanket weed now is making its way out and into my filter system, which is fantastic. So whatever I put in is working. And there's some more. It's all coming out quite nicely. From my pond into my filter system. Okay. 
Right, I ran out of <laughs> I ran out of daylight last night, believe it or not. I was so busy doing me uh, cleaning my filters out and talking to you guys that I <laughs> completely forgot what time it was. Next thing I'm talking to the camera and it's like dark. Check the footage afterwards, so I've had to dump that footage. But anyways, so I'm back today. I've had to wait till after work to do this next bit. So when I cleared my vortex out last night, you saw me doing it with the siphon. Did it with a siphon last night. And yeah, I've come up with a similar stuff that Andy came up with at Derby Coy. It's so you see that it's it's like a um, it's like a grainy substance. It's like a grainy stuff. Um, it's like a sandy. Which again, like Andy says on, on Derby Coy, if you don't follow his channel, have a look and I'll put the link down there, wherever. Um, so yeah, I, he's right. Yeah, it, it does leave like a, a substance, but I'm kind of thinking, is that a good thing? Because if it's going into the pond, flocculating and then heading down to the bottom drain and then off to my filter system, then great. But it seems to be doing the same as Andy's at Derby Coy as well, leaving some in the bottom drain that I'm not able to draw up and into my filter system. So that's an interesting one. So because it maybe it's because it's so heavy, it just sort of comes in and settles straight on the bottom. Because literally you put this stuff in water and give it a minute or two and it's separated just like sand. So it's a bit of sandy stuff. But anyway, so, so that's what it is on the bottom of there. So if you do use this product, this FOC product, then be aware that it, it can leave this substance in the bottom of your pond in your bottom drain. So when you wash it out, don't be surprised it's there. Right, just while we're waiting for this clover leaf to take more effect, because I've entered today and I'm now seeing clumps of this stuff coming off the side and into the filter system. So while we're waiting for that, I thought I'd have a, a play around with me video camera and see if I can get some different shots of the aquarium. I was playing around with it the other night and waiting for me tea or whatever I was doing, I don't know. But I started playing with the video camera and have a look at these shots to see what you think about uh, different views from the, from the aquarium. So right, let's get back to the clover leaf because it's been now for about seven, maybe eight days now. So I think it's about time to get the GoPro in <laughs> underwater and see how it's doing because I'm still getting the blanket weed in my filters and in my skimmer, which is a good thing and I like that. But until then, Matthew has asked about my trickle in and trickle out system and how does that work? 
So let's have a quick look, I'll show you. So here's the system I currently have. I used to get water going straight to the pond, but then decided to fit these dechlorinators to here and then trickle in feed straight into the last bay of the filter system. So basically water comes in here now and it's be straight out into the pond. It'll do full circulation before it gets back to here. So any chlorine that is missed, not a major problem for me because it won't get to the filters to cause problems in there and it won't cause many problems in the pond because it's literally a trickle in. Now what about the trickle out system? Okay, so there's my trickle out system. So this is basically my overflow that I've put on here with a, this is just something off a, a kid's swimming pool that I had years ago. This is just basically stop the media flushing down that pipe. So that sits on there now, so no media can get down the pipe. And this is where it trickles out. So as it fills, it just overflows in there. So whatever goes in there, overflows from here, and then away we go. That's it, that's how it works. Okay, so question you're probably asking, yeah, but how much are you trickling in and how much are you trickling out a week? I have no idea. Basically what I do with mine is, I just put it to trickle, and then let it trickle. I know you can sort of, you can put a litre bottle underneath your trickle, time how long it takes to fill, and then adjust from there. But sort of, just from experience, to be honest, is, is what my trickling is in now. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, <laughs> so what is trickling in now is basically what I've kind of guesstimated uh, to be a, a decent trickle and trickle out. Sometimes I'll increase that if I do a little bit of cleaning on the filters and my water level drops, I'll increase the trickle in just to, just to top it up and then turn it back down again. Sometimes I put it to a drip. If it's just dripping away quite nicely, then I'll leave it at that. For example, now, this is an interesting one with the rain. Now, we've had a lot of rain recently, so I turned my trickle in and trickle out off because there was a lot of water going into the pond and I wanted to make sure my overflow would cope with that overnight and then turn it back on again the following day. So you've got little options like that as well. Some people say you've got to leave them on 24-7, 365 days of the year. No, I don't. I think it could be a, a lot of waste of water if you did that, but if that's what you want to do, then you go for it. You know, I'm just going off what I do on my, my pond. So let's get back to the GoPro and see what's, how the Cloverleaf's doing. God, I've put my jumper on. Flipping Nora, it's, uh, I don't know it's like down your way, but it's really getting quite cold now. Tomp pond temperature. My pond temperature is down to 14 degrees. So I'm now considering whether to go out and get some sort of a, a summer and winter mix and bind them both together so the fish start getting used to eating wheat germ because I'll be feeding wheat germ real soon if this is the temperature you're gonna keep going this way. But you keep getting the odd blast of sun out, which is nice. So as you can see from the underwater footage, the clover leaf's starting to uh, dissipate now, it's starting to break off, just, just clumps now, instead of this, the long flowy stuff that we had last time. So do you need to use a full dose of clover leaf if you catch it early? I don't think you do, because that's twice now I've done this and twice I've had a pretty decent result, but I've only done eight days. And let's like say it usually takes about two weeks to get a full result. So probably you'll see something in, in the next video or in a future video just to confirm it did actually work because at the moment, yes, it is working. And the amount I put in, I know I said at the beginning, I'll work that out for you. The eight scoops that I put in was just on under half of what I would dose my pond with. So I can't give you the exact because your pond will be a little bit different to mine with your volume. So whatever your volume is of what, what you usually put in, if you use clover leaf, I put in just half, just under half of what I would put in as a full dose. And that seems to work for me. So you're not wasting the product, you're not jamming up your filters because there's loads of this the stuff in the filters. So, so far, so good. Worked pretty well for me. And on that bombshell, <laughs> thanks very much for watching. If you're not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button down on the bottom there. Click the like if you've liked the video, ding the bell for notifications and share to all your friends. Thanks very much for watching. This was Quick Fun Lifestyle.